In this video I'll be making a router table that fits into the fence rails of my table saw. For this project I have an offcut from my kitchen worktops which we made several months ago, there's a video about that on my channel. This is the cutout for the kitchen sink and I held onto it with this project in mind. It's 24mm thick birch plywood with a laminate glued to the top face. I measured the length and the width I needed and started to cut it down to size and I'm aiming for a really tight fit here between the rails. So I trimmed it down to length using my crosscut sled, offered it up and then took a very light pass until it squeezed in there nice and tight. I've got some of these spare square headed bolts that came with the saw. These fit into the fence rails and here I'm marking up where the bolts are going to be onto the underside of the plywood. And I removed some material from the back using a force and a bit just to create a bit of extra space around where the ends of the bolts will be to enable me to add a washer and nut on the end. With the bolts in and the plywood sitting on top of the boards, it happened to be almost perfectly flush with the cast iron table of my saw. So I took a couple of scraps of hardwood and ripped them down at the table saw to create some rails that I can fit to each end of the table. I marked up where the bolts would need to be and cut out a notch for them. and then I can glue and screw those rails in place. Here I'm sliding the table in place as a test fit, and this is where I found that the bolts were not quite long enough unfortunately. Rather than finding some longer bolts, I just unscrewed my rails and made a small cutout in them to give a bit more clearance, and then I can secure them again. And now I'm able to get a washer and nut on the end. Now to work on adding the router lift. Recently Souter Shop got in touch with me, a tool supplier based in Germany, who sell all sorts of woodworking tools but specialise in router motors and accessories, and they asked if they could help or provide anything for the project. I chose this router lift from their website, this is the OFL 2.0 Mini. It has above table height adjustment with a lock, magnetic insert plates with different sizes depending on which bit you're using, and it has a nicely machined anodized aluminium top and it just generally looks and feels like a high quality piece of equipment at a pretty competitive price when you look around at the available alternatives. Also comes with a nice colour instruction manual for those who read them. First I need to decide where to put it and you can probably see some pencil lines here as originally I was going to place it right in the centre but I decided to put it further back for reasons that will become clear later. I need to remove enough material to fit the body of the lift through a hole but leaving a decent sized lip around the edge to support the edges of the top part of the lift. I used the jigsaw starting with a plunge cut, please don't try this unless you're experienced with it, it's much easier just to drill a hole for the blade to get started. And that fits in there nicely. Next I can make a little template using some scraps of MDF and some hot glue placed surrounding the table as tightly as possible. I can then remove the lift and I made a mistake here which I'll talk about shortly, some of you might even be able to spot what it is already and guess where I went wrong. After carefully setting the height of my router bit to the thickness of the router lift top, I'm using a bearing guided bit referencing from the template to route out the shape needed. I took three passes, lowering the bit a little each time. So here's the mistake and it's a stupid one. The scraps of MDF that I'm using here have some mortises in them which I meant to place on the outside of the template. But I messed up and the bearing on the router bit went into those mortises causing me to route away too much material in those areas. So while I got a really nice fit in most areas and the face of the table was a tiny fraction below the surface of the router table which is exactly what I wanted, the mishap with those mortises completely ruined the clean look that I was hoping for. It doesn't matter too much though, this is a workshop tool after all so I can live with it. With the lift in place, next I can drill out the holes that will secure it down to the table. And these bolts came with the lift so I can secure it down with washers and nuts on the underside. It also comes with these tiny little grub screws which are perfect for fine tuning the height of the lift to get it perfectly flush with the table. And that was both quick and easy to do. Next I can fit the router motor which was also gifted to me by Soutershop. This is the Soutershop branded FM1000 made by Maffel and I've got to say it's a thing of beauty. 
It's worth pointing out that I was planning just to make do with something cheap and less premium when I was originally planning my router table build, but when Souter Shop offered to send me a router motor and I had a look through their website, there were two things that really excited me about this machine in particular. First, it has a quiet motor, which regular viewers will know is something that I always tend to look for with tools in general. And the second is this quick release arm for changing router bits, no tools needed. It also has variable speed ranging from 1 to 6 or 4000 to 25000 RPM. Really nice quality cable which is usually a telltale sign of a quality tool. This machine comes as standard with an EU style plug so I needed to rewire a UK plug on the end just temporarily so that I could test it out but I'll talk more about the electrical side of things later in the video too. But yeah, generally it's a machine that oozes quality and is built like a tank and to be honest I don't really feel worthy of it for the amount of routing that I do. This is far more premium a tool than I really need and let's be honest I wouldn't have been able to justify buying this at the price it costs if I were spending my own money. I guess the point I'm trying to make is that you don't have to spend crazy money to get a good router table set up but if you do have a bigger budget and if you want something a little bit special then this machine could be worth considering as it has some great features. It has an 8mm collet as standard and as pretty much all of my router bits are quarter inch or 6.35mm I also needed to get an 8mm shank collet chuck adapter to fit those bits. With that chuck adapter fitted though you lose the ability to use the toolless bit change via the quick release arm. That wasn't a huge issue for me though seeing as I was considering investing in some new router bits anyway so I bought a new set of 8mm bits that I can use in the router table so that I can still make use of the quick release arm. The bits that I bought were a cheap set by Bosch which isn't the best way to go to be honest there are much better router bits out there but I think they'll be good enough for what I need for now anyway. So I got the router fitted which was easy to do no drilling required it just bolts in place to the pre-existing holes in the lift. Next I added some rails to the underside of the table at the front which I'm hoping will prevent the table from sagging in the middle over time from the weight of the router lift and motor. And later on I decided to also add a rail at the back. Now I can get the table fitted and I wanted to get it as flush to the cast iron table of my table saw as possible and there was just enough movement in the slots that I cut for the bolts to get it right where I wanted it. and I can check that the table saw fence still moves okay and it does. Next I started making a fence attachment for my table saw fence that will also serve as a fence for the router table so I'm ripping down some offcuts of birch plywood and my fence has these knobs on the side which secure the auxiliary fence so I'm going to remove some material from the plywood with a force and a bit so that it sits flush to the side of the fence. And I cut another piece which is going to form an L shape and I glue and screw those bits together. The fence has these grooves in and I found some bolts with heads that fit inside the grooves. I mark up where those grooves are onto the ply and then I can drill some holes which I can use to fix the ply onto the fence using some wing nuts. Later on I replaced these with some plastic knobs which are just a little bit easier and nicer to use. I got these on Amazon and I'll leave links to them in the description box below. The bolts I had were too long so I cut them down. I can then mark up the centre point onto the fence. I cut some small pieces of ply to create kind of like a framework for the fence to build it out a little. This is just to create a little bit of extra space that I can use later on for dust extraction. And for the front face of the fence I'm going to use two pieces of MRMDF, one for the left hand side and one for the right. I shimmed them up off the table with a folded up piece of paper just to make sure that they were clear, I held them in place with some clamps and drilled some holes through into the frame that I can use for some countersunk bolts. And I'm going to make it so that I can open or close the mouth of the fence depending on what router bit I'm using. So after drilling with it both in the closed and open positions, I then need to turn these two holes into slots. And then I can countersink the holes in the fence to accommodate the heads of the bolts. And now as you can see I can open up and close the mouth. 
I'm also going to add a piece of T-Track at the front of the table that I can use for accessories. So here I'm using the table saw fence to route out a groove. And I took this in multiple small passes to get it to the right depth. I also needed to move the fence over by just a fraction to get the slot to the right width. And then roughly sanded the back of the aluminium to give the adhesive more grip before applying some epoxy to glue it in place. And the main accessory that I think I'm going to need is a feather board and I'm going to make that too. I started by marking up every 10 millimeters across a small scrap of plywood. I also marked up where I want my fingers of the feather board to come to. I rotated my mitre saw to 45 degrees and then I can line up the teeth of the blade to one side of each mark and make a cut up to the line. I cut away the waste and then I figured out where I wanted to cut some slots so that I can secure it down to the T-track using these bolts I found that fit quite nicely. I drilled a couple of holes and joined them together using the jigsaw. Gave it all a good sanding. And then I can fit it and this is going to be really handy when I need extra support for the workpiece so that I can keep my fingers well away from the router bit. I can then cut away the excess length. Dust extraction on this couldn't really be simpler. I just cut a top cap for the fence and drilled a 44mm hole with a hole saw bit right in the centre which was just big enough to accommodate my usual vacuum hose which I use for most of my tools in the workshop. I glued and pinned it down onto the top of the fence and I can test it out. It seems to work really well, but just to make sure it's properly sealed off, I applied some silicon to the inside so that all of the airflow is directed to collecting from the router bit. Then I could apply finish and I'm just using a couple of coats of spray varnish, denibbed in between, which will give a bit of protection to the wood and keep it all clean. The plan is to keep this fence fitted at all times as it doesn't impact using the table saw in any way, but I've got the option of taking it off whenever I need to. The weight of the router table fence does make the table saw fence a little heavy in use compared with how it was before though. It worked okay, but later on I ended up drilling out some holes through the fence with a large hole saw bit just to cut down the weight a little more and that actually worked pretty well. Finally, I mentioned earlier about the electrical side of things. My friend who's an electrician kindly fitted this NVR style switch to the front of the table. This was salvaged from an old machine I believe, but he wired it all in for me and it works great. Much better than buying a new one. If you're not sure what an NVR switch is or what it does, don't ask me questions because chances are I'm not going to know, but I'll link to a good video below by Gosforth Handyman which explains it all in detail. Most of the time I'll probably just be using the router table with bearing guided bits for cutting roundovers, bevels and rebates. But also using the fence I'll also be able to cut things like slots too. Oh, and one more thing to mention, my table saw is on wheels so I can move it around depending on the size of the workpiece that I'm working with. That's the router table done and I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. Definitely not perfect, but it works well for what I need. Thanks again to Souter Shop for the lift and the router motor. I'll put links in the description box below to the Souter Shop website if you want to check them out. I'll also keep you updated in future videos with how this setup is working for me. Like I said earlier, this is a far nicer and less basic setup than I ever expected to have when I was originally planning my router table build. Please subscribe to my channel for more weekly woodworking videos if you'd like to help support the channel and get exclusive content, early access to my videos, free project plans and cut lists and a name credit at the end of my videos. You can find links to YouTube channel membership and my Patreon page in the description box below. And thank you for watching.